What's up guys? In this video we're going to be going over speed sensor diagnostics. We're going to go over the two tests you want to perform to determine if the speed sensor is bad or if the problem lies elsewhere. Alright, so I'm hooking up power to this trailer of white to negative and blue to positive to energize the ABS. And I'm going to walk back to the rear of the trailer and we're going to see the ABS light is on. So we're going to head up to the front of the trailer to pull blink codes. Uh, I already had a look underneath the trailer and it says a Meritor Wobco unit under there. And to pull blink codes in a Meritor Wobco, you apply power for a second, remove power for a second, and then reapply it. And the light should start blinking a certain amount of times. So if we count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have blink code six. So we look at the list here. And it tells us blink code 6 is a problem with sensor YE2. It could be a cable break, short circuit, or out of adjustment. So we got to enter the trailer and check it out. All right, we're underneath the trailer now. And again, we did our blink codes. We got blink code 6. Meritor Wildco, when they do their blink codes, it's pretty simple. They just, you know, give you a, a single-digit number, blink code 6. Um, but it could be anything wrong with it. The, it could be the extension cable, the sensor. It could be open circuit, short circuit, gap too big. Um, it's any one of those things. So you just have to check it from there. Uh, some other units like Bendix units, uh, they'll give you more specific codes. They'll tell you if the gap's too big or if it's short to ground or open circuit. So it's a little more easy to troubleshoot. But we got a uh, Meritor Wobco unit right here and we had a blink code six. Meritor Wobco labels their ports. I can't get my camera up here, but it's up on the top right here. And YE2 is on uh, this port right here, this connection, all right? So this is actually an extension cable right here that gets plugged into a shorter speed sensor uh, cable. Uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes there's just one long speed sensor uh, cable that gets plugged right into here. So just know that sometimes the extension cable can be bad, not the actual speed sensor itself. And the connection is usually somewhere down here on the axle. All right, so we know again that it's a problem on YE2. Uh, that's this one here, I already traced it out and it actually jumps across here to this wheel end right here. So we know I have something, uh, some sort of problem uh, on, on this wheel end. Could be the extension cable, could be the sensor, uh, could be the tone ring, the gap. We got to check it out. All right, the first test we're going to go over is ohming out the speed sensor. We recommend this is the first test you do because, number one, you don't have to do anything to the trailer. You don't have to release the brakes. You don't have to jack up the axle to spin the wheel. Um, you can just disconnect a connector and plug your meter in and check the resistance of the sensor and see if it's good or not. Um, this isn't the best test. The best test is the next test I'll, I'll go over, the AC voltage test. Uh, but this is the best one to start with because you have to do the least amount of stuff to, to find something that's bad. All right. So we got the ohm out the speed sensor. Here's a typical speed sensor. This is a brand new Wobco speed sensor. This is a brand new Bendix speed sensor. I have these two out. You can see the difference. They're both straight. They're both relatively the same size. The Bendix one's a little bit longer, um, but they ohm out different. When you ohm these sensors out, by the way, when you're working on ABS, it's a good thing to make one of these uh, connections right here. Just make it off an old speed sensor uh, extension cable. You need the, the male end and then just terminate the other, uh, the two wires with anything that you want to uh, and then hook your meter leads up to here. Reason being is it is uh, very hard to get your meter leads without probes into these uh, holes right here um, without crossing them over. So to make one of these, you can just plug it in and then put your meter leads up to here. All right, so we're gonna ohm out this Wobco speed sensor. All right, we're gonna put it on resistance. All right, put your meter leads on. Doesn't matter, positive or negative when you're me measuring resistance. And you can see we got 1,187 ohms, so just about 1,200 ohms. And that's a brand new sensor. And I know from experience that's, that's, that's normal. You gotta be careful, uh, temperature will affect you can see right now we have 1186 ohms. If I put my hand on and I wrap it up and I heat it up, you'll watch the resistance will go up. See, so we got 1187, 1188, 1189, 1190. All right, so obviously a, a couple ohms here and there is gonna matter. Just know that if you have a trailer come in and it's fresh off the road and the wheel ends piping hot, uh, you're gonna get a difference uh, different uh, resistance measurement than a brand new one. But for Wobco, it's about 1200. We do the same test on this new uh, Bendix with the white end. We should get about 1750 on a brand new sensor. Get in there. Come on. 
right? About 1667, a little under 1700, all right? But that's well within its range. They'll have a, uh, an ohm range. Uh, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but 1600, 1670 is close enough to 1700. So, uh, again, brand new sensor here. Uh, but they ohm out differently. So you want to be careful about having a Wabco speed sensor on one side and a Bendix on the other. The difference in resistance between the two could cause a problem and have a throw code. All right, so let's test out the actual uh, sensor on the trailer now. Again, I'm uh, going to start with the extension cable that plugs into the sensor to test everything at once. And I know if everything's good here, if I get a good resistance reading right here, I know that the sensor is also good because it has to go through the extension cable first. All right, so pop this connector off. YE2 is on uh, this port right here, this connector. Pull it off. Plug in my extension cable. All right, fire up the meter, put it on resistance. All right, let's see what we got. All right, 1190, you can see it's just about the same as a brand new sensor. So, ohming out from the extension cable right here, right where it plugs into the ECU, I can tell that um, this sensor is ohming out good. So now we're gonna move on to the next test uh, to further test the sensor. That's the uh, AC voltage test. Okay, for this test, uh, we're gonna be taking a reading off the speed sensor uh, and the reading is going to be an AC voltage, right? It's not gonna be in DC like 99% of everything else you're gonna check on a tractor or trailer. Uh, this is gonna be in AC, all right? Uh, two things you gotta have done, you gotta have the brakes released, so I have air going up to the red glad hand, uh, and you have to have the axle with the ABS sensors jacked up so you can spin the tires. You see these tires are free spinning. Uh, you gotta spin the tires at a certain rate when you're doing this test. All right, so we have it on AC voltage. I'm gonna plug that connector I had on the actual speed sensor, not at the extension cable, at the, ECD, at the ECU like I did last time for the resistance test. Really doesn't matter, but I just kinda wanna take the opportunity to show where this connect, connection is. I'll plug in right here. All right, I'm gonna take my meter leads. We're taking an AC voltage measurement, so just like the resistance, doesn't matter which lead goes on where. And then we're gonna spin the tires. So I have a white mark on the tire here somewhere. All right, so to do this test, you need to spin the tires. It should take two seconds to do one full revolution. So at that rate, when you're doing an AC voltage measurement, we should get at least 0.2 volts AC. All right, at that rate. So, um, and it should go up, the voltage should go up the faster I spin the tire. So we're gonna see what we got. All right, and you don't have to get too critical on the timing. It just be close to one revolution every two seconds. One, one thousand, two, one, one thousand, two, one. All right, that's pretty good. All right, let's see what we got. All right, now that's on millivolts. Range of the volts, all right. We got 0 0.02 volts, not 0 0.2, 0 0.02 volts, so like 20 millivolts. Um, so that's not enough. At this rate, at one revolution every two seconds, we should be making at least two volts, and the faster we spin it, the higher the voltage should go, but it's only getting to like 0 0.03. So we have an issue. So we're gonna pop the tires off and see what's going on. All right, we got the tires and the drum off, and I can see the problem here. If you look at the, here's a speed sensor, and this is the tone ring. This is what the speed sensor reads, all right? So these little metal teeth right here uh, are affecting a permanent magnet in here, and that permanent magnet uh, being attracted to each one of these teeth as it passes through the sensor induces a voltage and a frequency onto the speed sensor wires going back to the ECU, and the ECU interprets that as the, as the wheel speed. All right, and this gap right here is too big. I can see that my screwdriver in there, I can wiggle it around. Even though it looks like a small gap, it should be all but touching or touching that tone ring. All right, so before I just push it up to the tone ring, I kind of wanted to show you here. I'm gonna fire up the meter again. AC voltage. All right, and I got my alligator clips on. I'm gonna try to spin at the same rate, that uh, one revolution every two seconds. We should get the same reading we did before. 
and we are about 0 0.03 all right now watch what happens when i push this speed sensor up against the tone ring i don't know if you can see here all right right there bottomed out onto the speed sensor now you can just bottom it out they used to tell you to gap the speed sensor it used to be like 12 thousandths or like 0.3 millimeter uh we used to take a piece of paper and like fold it over twice and run it in between the speed sensor and the tone ring uh to gap the sensor but you can pretty much just push it up against the tone ring and the one to five thousandths uh end play that you have or should have uh in your hub should gap the sensor for you so you can just push it right up against the uh the tone ring and let's look at the measurement we're getting now again we want 0.2 volts at that uh, one revolution every two seconds. Now look at that. I'm getting 0 0.9, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. And these things, a good sensor gapped properly can make over two volts. If I start spinning this thing fast without breaking my arm, you can see I got two volts right there. All right. So that was the issue there, the gap too big on the speed sensor and it reduced the signal strength that the ECU could read. So we'll put this thing back together and make sure the ABS light goes out.